I decide to hike up the mountain behind my house this weekend. My body's getting flabby. My mind needs fresh air. The weather is getting cooler now. That fall is smiling a crooked pumpkin grin upon us. I put on pants, a long sleeve shirt, with a fleece vest, and lace up my boots that are beginning to tear, where the tongue is pulled tight. I think, do I really want to do this? It's almost a 1,000 foot elevation gain, and, and I've been lazy. Yes, I want to do it. But my body doesn't move. Okay, I'm getting up now. I load the pack, two large water bottles, camera with zoom lens, tuna sandwich, apple, cheese and crackers for my picnic at the top. Oh, and chapstick. A journal for all the writing I imagine I'm going to do. Cell phone, knife, bandana, and so on, until my pack is nice and heavy. (laughs) Now I'm ready. I walk slowly up my driveway and out the gate. Could I be more excited? I can feel my body groaning, while my spirit slowly wakes up. There is a breeze, just right, blowing in from the west. I can do this. I go to the end of my street, and trudge on. The rocks lining the edges of the path seem to welcome me as I walk by. I drop into the wash with my first steep hillside meeting me at the bottom. Okay, here I go. I lean into the hill, and step by step, step by slow step, begin making my way past past juniper, parched beaver tail cactus, bitter brush, and oh, there is a matchweed. Cool. I get to the top of the first hill, and am greeted by a pinion pine. It whispers something to me, but I can't make out what it's trying to say. So I tighten the straps of my pack and move on. The ground is bare for the most part, on the ridge I am trudging up. There's some dead brush and exposed rocks. I skirt the edge and see last year's penstemons waiting for the rain. As I get higher, I notice the flame, the flannel brush, flannel bush leaves are small, but healthier looking than when I saw them in the heat of the summer. The leaves didn't get much bigger than half an inch across this year, but some years they are over an inch wide. Right now, they are hunkered down waiting for the big rain, laying off leaves, turning into photosynthesizing machine, turning the photosynthesizing machine on low, and coasting through the rain recession. It won't be long before they are putting out buds in anticipation of a better year. I find myself staring at the ground because it is too painful to look up at the next looming hill. The best thing about this hike is that it's broken up by a steep hill, then a flat stretch, another steep hill, flat area, and so on until you find yourself at the top. The flat areas are fun to look forward to, but they go by too quickly. The steep parts are easier if you look down and imagine you're on a flat part, but they don't go quickly enough. By about the third flat part, I look back. My house is a small, square lump, about as far away as the top of the peak. I could walk back. I turn to look at the top. It is closer than my house. A pair of ravens call out. The third one answers from the valley beyond. I have lunch in my pack. It's too early to eat. I am not walking home to go have lunch that I packed out, packed for an outing. But the next hill is too big all of a sudden. I'm getting hot. I don't want to do it. Yes, I do. What am I saying? I have to do this. I am perfectly capable. I take a drink of water and move forward. I look closely at a flannel bush and realize it's a Ceanothus gregae. I had a friend who was very fond of this plant. Once we went up this very trail in the moonlight with two little flashlights and never saw one. He's not going to believe I found one on this trail. Oh, and another one. Awesome. I notice also that the manzanita is turning yellowish green winding down for the winter, a sure sign of drier days and cold nights. I'm almost at the top now. The brush is getting thicker. I have to squeeze past flannel bushes that try to touch me. As much as I am honored by their affection, I don't want their bristly hairs all over my shirt. I am halfway up the latest steep part when I stop. My house is now obscured from my view, and so is the top of the peak. 
Seems I am in a no man's land. I fight back the urge to say, when are we going to be there, daddy? Maybe I should just eat lunch now. I think about it. It's been about an hour of slow trudging. Don't I deserve a break? I know once the sandwich comes out, I am done. It will be the last thing to do before turning around. Come on, I say to myself, don't cave in now. I must get to the top. I'm getting hot. I debate over taking my vest off, but don't want to carry it. I lift up my foot and shuffle on. I am soon surrounded by bushes again, this time mostly bitter brush. The debate about going back bounces around in my head when a quick gleam catches my eye. It's a, it's a beautiful dragonfly. I am mesmerized by these little beasts and can write on and on about past encounters I've had with them. For now, though, I am thrilled to see this one and quickly put the zoom lens on my camera. I take a few photographs, but he flies up on, flies on up the trail. Darn it. I go ten or so paces to the next bush. Click, click, click. I take a few more photos. He zips all around me and lands even further up the trail. Again, I follow him to the next bush. This happens over and over. I feel like I'm being mocked. Or no, maybe encouraged. I figure I can talk to him. Why not? So I say, thank you. The dragonfly zips away like they are, want to do, and I am mesmerized. I'm energized to finish the climb. I have one slippery, steep, rocky part, and then I'm at the top. It's windy here. The view is worth it. I look at the road below me and see cars traveling on the distant highway. To the north, I see my house, the high school, and the town of Phelan. I sit down to finally eat my lunch, but not before I notice the dragonfly sitting on the bush next to me. Wow, so that was uh, anonymous, or, uh, submitted by anonymous. Man, I like that piece. What did you think? That was a really beautiful meditation that yeah. I really <laughs> zoned out. Um, I love anonymous. Um, yeah. I believe that this author brought in something else, um, very much in relation to nature. Yeah. This this author, I mean, they really have a great understanding of being involved in nature and having that ultimate sense of uh just being one with it i don't know how mm. else to explain kind of sleeping in it basically yes and i loved this idea of there's that moment there's the house there's the top yeah what do i do and just go all the way and that was really but it was it's hard to explain this this ability to go all the way but in such a step at a time yeah i just thought that was such a great thing especially the dragonfly yes i believe those that to be luck on. yeah and it was following that was pretty neat yeah, I love that equivocation too because it really applies to anything. You hit that point where you're like, well, I could turn around right now and it would be so easy. I mean, I can see the where I would go back to and then you look forward again and you're like, well, I, I guess it's about the same distance. Maybe I could just keep going. And so you kind of just like half trudge up there just a little bit and, you know, kind of get distracted by a few things and then next thing you know, you're, you're kind of already there. And the neat thing about this too is it wasn't, um, while she did do this, I'm assuming she, I think she mentioned she in there a few times. Um, it, uh, it has this, this draw from, uh, from nature. That's, that's what pulls this person up like further. That's the very last thing. This, this thing that she's following in nature, not really completes her, but basically assists her in where she's going. And man, it's just, I love these themes of nature because that's, that's kind of where I go for my own meditations and stuff. And so when I see this, it's just a beautiful thing. It's so, it's such a good piece and it's, it's written so well too. And it has just such a nice cadence. The way it's written just kind of is a slow trudge. There's a lot of discussion going on, a lot of thought, a lot of kind of getting immersed in the environment around her. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just an amazing thing. <laughs> I agree. Um, I love the knowledge this author has on um, the environment around uh, wherever this is. I don't know if this was fiction or nonfiction. Did uh, it say? There's, I, there was nothing attached to 
um, the author's email. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah. And what's beautiful about this piece is we can take it either way. Um, but the knowledge on the uh, ground is, uh, not a ground, <laughs> the yeah. knowledge of the nature in this piece is phenomenal. Um, one thing that I really love is we have all this nature, all this nature, mm. but then we have this human nature in mm. there. And my favorite part is about the sandwich. This, <laughs> I don't know, this is, you know, when it comes to exercising, I look for the treat at the end, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> whether it's going to be the sandwich or, you know, the yogurt, whatever it is. I love that this, uh, this author, this narrator, this main character is going through all this and they just keep landing on the sandwich. Like, <laughs> I just want to eat. I, I just want to eat. And that beautiful moment where the, the writer go, or the, uh, I'll say main character. We're going to say main character. Yeah, I don't know if this is works. fiction, or nonfiction. Uh, uh, FYI, if it is a, you know, fiction piece, we do say main character. So we'll oh, just okay. call it that. Um, so this main character literally holds on to this idea of, oh, I just, if I eat this sandwich, it's done. We're done. I can't yeah. go any further. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, that I totally had this wonderful relation to once you put food in front of me and I eat, I'm done. <laughs> that nothing else matters anymore. And <laughs> I'm not going to go further. I've got my reward. <laughs> and which is kind of surprising to say that because I believe the reward is everything around this character, everything they see. Um, and I like how the, the main char the, the character in this says, I take a few photographs and that's it. It's almost like that's, that's almost seems somewhat drudgery as compared to the, the walk itself. It's more about enveloping and feeling and just really well done. I, I'm a really huge fan of this author. Uh, maybe one day we'll get to know who it is. Yeah. I like, I really like, um, I'm trying to think back a few years ago, I had a really wise person in my life at the time say that it really, <clears throat> excuse me, in life, the small details really matter. And this, this entire piece was just loaded with yes. small details that made this entire walk for the main character, just an extremely sensory rich and just mental rich. And, uh, it was just such an amazing piece I'm running out of words. Yeah. No, word. <laughs> I love that you mentioned sensory. I am a sensory. Just, I love when, pe when, when writers put in these moments that we can taste, feel, taste, feel, um, anyway, smell, however, and this, I, when I say meditation, the reason why I use that word is in meditation, we are present. We are feeling the moment. We are seeing what is around us. What's in front of you, your two hands, but beyond the hands, we see these magnificent, um, uh, I don't even know, to be honest with you, what some of these uh, types of plants are, oh, but yeah. I can have an idea. Um, it sounds like we are in the desert. Um, and, and I've lived in the desert, so to yeah. me, I understand that feeling of, here comes the winter, it's going to be dry. Mm -hmm. And the plants are preparing for that. They're getting ready, and this person, obviously, uh, this main character, has lived in this area long enough to know the land, to yeah. know how the plants are going to react. And I love that. Yeah. That means whatever it is, this person has, um, this character has been out there in this earth long enough to be able to know how cyclical it is. It, mm. it always does the thing that it is going to do because that is what it does. There's a beautiful sense of peace and and harmony in knowing that, you know, things change, seasons change, but they change in a very cyclical manner. I don't know how to explain. For me, <laughs> I find a really good peace and serenity in knowing that, yes, things change, but things change for a reason. Yeah. And it always kind of comes back to, I don't know, I'm, I'm missing the word. There's a, <laughs> uh. I don't know how to explain that, that there's change, but there's, um, you might have to help me on meaning, this one. Meaning, I guess. I guess. Okay, so we know that a tree will always bloom every year. Right. Until it dies kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you call knowing that this tree is always going to change, even though it, it, it's still change, but it's... Uh, it's like consistent? Consistency. Okay, Thank you. Oh, go. my goodness. <laughs> this is why we're... we're <laughs> the audience those. is going, consistency. <laughs> <laughs> just get it already. There's a consistency in this change, and there's something that you're just like, ah. Oh, I know it's going to change, but I know it'll always be the same thing. And it makes me feel good. Yeah. I can, I can, I can trust that this is going to always be this way. 
yeah, it's stable. Stable, also, that's the word. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. <laughs> also at the end there too, um, I was looking over while you were while you were talking. It says in the town of Phelan, which I know is in SoCal and is oh. a desert. So you're very spot on in that. Okay. Um, and that's it. Says it right there. So. It's so funny. That's the last word. Yeah. The, like the la- second to last pe- sentence in this entire story. Yep. And we don't even need to know it. Like it's it's we just feel it. We're already there without yeah. the author even having to say it. But I really like that. That yeah. I know now at the end of oh, okay now I know where we are. I was right. Yeah. <laughs> and what's interesting too is you're we're uh, slightly earlier we were talking about food being kind of that last like the the end goal like if you eat it now we're just gonna be like it might as well give up because we've already had food we had to turn around <laughs> but <clears throat> when it's the end goal this last sentence really has some meaning then if we take that that kind of approach i sit down to finally eat my lunch but not before i notice the dragonfly sitting on the bush next to me it was uh if you want to like i said if you want to take that approach there the lunch obviously the end goal you finally you've arrived at the destination and part of the end goal is also being there with nature and the fact yes. that it has arrived there with you and really has been there the entire time. So it's like this consistent companion that's always there throughout this entire thing. And it, uh, it's just that end just kind of has, <laughs> it's like the last bite of a sandwich. It's, it's a perfect. good ending. Yeah. And endings yeah. are hard to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I like the beginning here too, um, because all these things that, that this uh, this character is talking about. Two large water bottles, camera with zoom lens, tuna sandwich, <laughs> really kind of speaks to a person who, uh, yeah, like you said, is aware of everything, kind of knows what, they're, what they might need, what they might not need, but they, they, they plan very, very, uh, very consistently, I guess is that word again. And um, I really like that because there's no, there's no want in, the, in that character. They're just like, okay, I know what I need. I'm moving forward. I know that I'm going to have to get over this thing, like blah, blah, blah. There's, there's kind of that inner struggle, but they keep themselves very stable and rooted. They keep everything yep. around them that's needed to continue moving forward. Yeah, someone who has a very good vision of uh, uh, details. The first line, I have to admit, the first two sentences, absolute favorite. I decide to hike up the mountain behind my house this weekend. Beautiful, grounding information, boom, we got it. We yeah. don't really need much else. We don't care why. And then the second line is my body is getting flabby and my mind needs fresh air. <laughs> oh, I love that because the, the, the detail of that body getting flabby, we all know that, that feeling of like, even if you may not be flabby, you feel it yeah. in your, in your soul in a sense. And it's like, to work out a little yes. bit. Get out and my body's around. getting flabby. I need to go for a walk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not that a walk would fix it, but <laughs> I just something about that that line is it's, it's so relatable. It is. It's. I don't want to use the word comical, but it's like you. It's inst- comical. It's, I think. Yeah, yeah, you instantly relate that first to like the second sentence in this whole thing. It's I'm almost like, like you read it with just like a roll in your eyes. My body's getting flabby. <laughs> my mind needs fresh air. Yeah, because it's so true. It's funny actually that they don't say that my body needs fresh air. My mind needs fresh air. It's like, mm-hmm. oh my goodness, that's brilliant. <laughs> it's, it's like an observation too. Yeah. It's like a self-diagnosis where like, well, <laughs> this and this, so I need this. Let's right. Move forward, which also speaks of a very well-rounded person. I just, would definitely say well-rounded. This is yeah. somebody who, I mean, you know, I do yoga with this person and they yeah. would be the person that would yeah. tell me like they've been doing it for so long. Yeah. You what know? they've learned from Yeah, their, I definitely would feel like this would be a, a great mentor. Somebody who's very in tune with themselves and the earth. Things around and them. And just things around them. I'm blown away by this. Again, you know, anonymous, can we be friends? <laughs> 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 I feel like I have a bit to learn from you. So this yeah. is great. Mm, man. We had other things planned too, but man, this is, this is taken up so much because it's such, worth it's it, such a good worth piece. Worth it. And we don't get enough pros. So yeah. thank you. I think they were listening to us when I we requested. I would hope so. <laughs> that would be, I'd be very sad if someone doesn't listen to the piece. When they yeah, that. no, they were listening when we were requesting more on the oh, uh, yes, pros. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank goodness. <laughs> thank you yeah, so much. That's, uh, that's, this is really great. Again, those of you who are out there who um, are looking to submit, we're, we're, we're really open to creativity here. Yeah, and anything exactly so i don't know if we would necessarily call this a flash fiction but it's a definite a meditation on mm. uh nature it's a really good essay yeah i do enjoy it yes so. and i feel like that's a really good time to plug like write.onair at gmail.com <laughs> that's where you can submit <laughs> yes that's w-r-i-t-e dot on air at gmail.com yes please yeah we're looking for prose we're looking for lyrics we're looking for 
uh, short pieces, whatever you have that you are curious to know what someone might read into it. That's kind of what we're here for. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we actually have another meditation uh, piece, really short, just about a paragraph um, yeah. that was actually sent to me. <laughs> All right. So. Um, Is it uh, another anonymous piece or? I actually no. Um, this is, uh, his name is Michael. Okay. And uh, Michael's piece. There is actually no title on this that I see. All right. Well, let's get right into it then. All right. Again, this piece is from Michael Abuzi. All right. No, untitled. She'd never been loved like this before. Unlike most, he'd walked the fiery coals of life and emerge enlightened rather than afflicted. It was hard for her to explain, but she knew. He had a depth, an intensity, a passion that was palpable. When he looked at her, she knew that he saw her, and like no one had ever dared. Nothing was held back, there was no reservations, rather total surrender and acceptance. She could sense it in his touch and taste it in his kiss. Most of all, as he gazed into her eyes, she could feel him inside of her, venturing her depths. His complete presence in each moment honored her, vulnerable and protective. In such a space, she could surrender. For the first time, she was able to let go and be herself with another, fully without fear. Tears rolled down her cheek, but this was not pain, not confusion. This was a life repressed being released. Her heart softened, her touch lightened, falling further into her eyes fearlessly. Her depth had become infinite. An ever-expanding universe of pure beauty revealed itself within her as having always been there. No one ever knew how to look for it before. She'd never be the same. She was free. All right. Oh, man. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a really good meditation on love. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I push against love, but <clears throat> that wasn't the usual <laughs> love. This, you know, if I could actually kind of go into what I think this means in love. Yes. I feel it's a meditation on uh, acceptance of like a higher power. Mm. Sometimes we make people a higher power, uh, but sometimes we find something more spiritual. And she'd never been loved like this before. In my in my mind, the only thing that could love me more than anything on earth would be something unearthly. Mm, I see. So I don't know why I thought that this would be the yeah. love of a higher power, but for me, it's the only thing I could imagine coming inside of me where it says... Um, I'm trying to find the line. <laughs> <laughs> there's that one above, and then there's an ever-expanding universe of pure beauty revealed itself within her as having always been there. And in, you know, I do, do, I do meditations and in my meditation, I always feel like that chakra in my chest, you know, mm. uh, always expanding. Yeah. And that's when I can feel quote unquote, my higher power, as you may call it expanding inside me, which is kind of crazy. It pushes out all the bad. And I feel like I would never be the same when this happens. An ever expanding universe of pure beauty reveal yes. itself. And I always feel more free when I get to those moments. It's a daily thing, but <laughs> I want to call this a meditation on a higher power. And that's my, that's my view. Yeah. I don't know what your thought might be on no, that. No, that's perfect. I think it could be that. Like, like you said, we really give that higher power to a lot of things. We attribute it to a lot of different things. And I think that's a really accurate representation of it. Definitely. I mean, it, it, the fact that it's just, it's so intimate to this person. Yeah. And it's unique to this person as well, which is what makes it even more profound. Cause, um, if you want to speak on the higher power thing too, I think he capitalizes, um, all the he's in here as well, but they're at the start of the sentence. So you could kind of read one way or the other, but that's just an interesting note. Exactly. I think it's his complete presence in each moment, honoring her existence as mm -hmm. sacred as his own. We are God's children. I hear that, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, a lot of people say that and you know, we are a part of our higher power and we, you know, exude that and given the chance. 
Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I really enjoyed this. <laughs> and I don't know. I, again, I call it a meditation. I'm thinking it's a, a prose poem, which means it's a poem, but it's written uh, as we would read like an essay, right. if that makes sense. For those of you who might have poems like this, you're not sure if it's a poem or not. I, you know, I call it a meditation. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> and I, I actually, this is usually the end of the show where we kind of uh, lace in the connections and kind of weave it together. And uh, we're never really sure how it's gonna gonna happen because it's, it's uh, we've told people before. I know we've said this on the show before that we read all these fairly fresh, um, maybe glance over them a little bit before, but for the most part, we're trying to recreate the same first impression that you guys are having when you listen. That way, when we point out something, it's hopefully something that everyone has kind of picked up on and gone, oh, that's that is something that, that I found when was interesting when you read it, but. Um, what I'm seeing here, because you've used the word meditation a few times, and you can uh, have your own um, take on this too, <laughs> but uh, I feel like both of these pieces really deal with immersion yes. in something. Yes. And so we see like the first piece, which is, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> coughing tonight a lot. Uh, <laughs> we see this first piece, piece called The Luck of the Dragon, and there's this, this immersion in the hike and then getting to the goal. And it's not like a this this diehard focus, but it's more of a process. It's more of just kind of I lean into the hill and step by slow step begin making my way past juniper, parched beaver tail cactus, bitter brush, and oh, and then it kind of distracts. But it's <laughs> but that's the whole point. There's this yes. goal, and then it becomes a distraction, and then all of a sudden they're there, and everything around this person is assisting in that process. And it's the same for uh, Michael's piece. Because the character in here, I think it is, yeah, she was free. Um, the girl in here has, has immersed herself in another person, a higher power, something that is giving her meaning in a sense. It is, it is keeping her going. Her heart softened. Everything changed when she was, became part of that process, essentially, that part of that thing that, that took her away. There were no reservations, rather total surrender and acceptance which to me is immersion. That's like going underwater. And they both have the same theme in, in totally different perspectives. This one might be more tangible in a sense, but also has this really numinous um, feel to it with the dragonfly. Uh, and the other one, obviously, if you want to have the numinous word there, really fits in because <laughs> if you want to say it's the spiritual sense, yeah. it's the exact same thing. Um, so either one can be taken in these really different ways, either really tangible, slightly spiritual, slightly ethereal, in a sense, um, depending on whatever route you want to go, which also is a really good segue, and sorry, I'm totally monopolizing <laughs> this, uh, into what these pieces are, because you can read into so many different things on all these things. I've, I've talked with a lot of writers who've submitted, and it's, it's interesting, because part of the enjoyment for them, at least some of them, is when their meaning is understood for something, <laughs> but the second half of that, equally as much so, is when something different comes from it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so when we see like these different things and we're giving our impression, we're trying to hit as many as we can to see these different perspectives because all these pieces are like picking up a gem that's been, uh, that has, it's multifaceted essentially. And you can drop it on the table and one end pops up and then you touch it and another end pops up and it's still the gem the entire way around and it has a root to it. There's a middle in it that you can kind of see, but it's it's just so expansive. So all these pieces, like the root here is, is this immersion but you can see it from so many different perspectives and that's what makes these pieces just beautiful so <laughs> anyway there's my rant <laughs> that was yes and again with that alone that just what you had said that's your meditation on yeah. these pieces that seem to be again on meditation both in nature and higher powers these yeah. are just great pieces i just love this show <laughs> yep yep this is fun yeah. yeah so please if you're out there go ahead and yes. submit to us anything to, anything yeah. you want to submit we've taken writers who've who are just getting to their first go we've taken ones who've been writing for a long time anything is worthy of being on this show because it's there is no worthy it's just submit it's pretty cool yeah, we'd like if you'd like to see what we see in your work yes. uh this is your chance so w-r-i-t-e at Oh, wait, on air. Yeah, oh no. Oh, <laughs> at gmail. <laughs> let's get this again. It's right.onair at gmail.com, which is W-R-I-T-E dot onair at gmail.com. 